set in the aortic graft. I'm Nicole. I'm Rachel. I'm Michelle. And I'm Marianne. Each year, 200,000 people from the United States are diagnosed with abdominal aortic aneurysm. This occurs when the aorta becomes weakened and enlarged. The main demographic this affects is men and women over the age of 50, but primarily it affects men. Chances of developing an aneurysm increases if you are a smoker or have high blood pressure. High blood pressure. Um, vascular grafts are used to combat aneurysms and can be seen in the picture below. Between 1-6% to 6 of vascular graft replacements result in infections. While this might not be a high percentage, it can lead to devastating complications. Um, depending on when the infection is caught, it can lead to amputation or death. Currently, the mortality rate is 25-75%. to 75%. Medical and surgical treatment of infections costs $40,000 per case. The current gold standards to, to treat abdominal aneurysms are synthetic grafts. These are made typically of Dacron, as seen in the picture above, and Gore-Tex. These, however, can become infected with the formation of biofilms. Biofilms, is a, as you can see in the picture, is an aggregation of bacteria on the surface of a material. These films can become 10 to 1,000 times more resistant to antibiotics than free-swimming bacteria. In early stage infection, which is within four months after surgery, Staph and MRSA are the main microbes that cause infection. And in late stage, which is greater than four months after surgery, staph of the epidermitis strain causes infection. Overall, grafts need to promote endothelialization and not have blood clotting, otherwise the grafts will fail in the body. So as you can see, there's a need for a vascular graft that provides prolonged infection resistance against these biofilms while also ensuring mechanical strength, the blood compatibility, and endothelialization. So to meet the needs that both Rachel and Michelle talked about, we've engineered a synthetic graft with a Dacron base. It has two layers, one internal and one external, and to address the need for integration within the body and infection resistance. Um, it can be sutured into the body like other grafts, so surgeons won't need to learn a second procedure. Now I'll tell you about the different layers. So for the internal layer, we want to use an electrospun drug eluting polymer. The polymer that we're interested in is polycaprolactone, because it doesn't have the acidic byproducts that other polymers have. So electrospinning allows for a very porous surface that uh, creates cell ingrowth into the material. What we can do is incorporate commonly used drugs such as triclosan, which is an antimicrobial agent, which would be 92% effective for early and late stage infections, and heparin, which is an anticoagulant. So PCL degrades within the time of six months to two years, which is well within the range of early to late stage infections. So to further promote endothelialization, we can add RGD peptides to the surface. So literature has shown that you can cross like this to the PCL surface so that the end terminal is still able to attach to endothelial cells. So the inside surface coating that Marianne just talked about will be applied to a Dacron synthetic graft to provide for the structure of our graft. Dacron is used in 80% of large synthetic, large vessel synthetic grafts, and it has a high tensile strength to withstand the blood pressure. The outside surface coating will just be electrospun PCL with triclosan for its antimicrobial properties. The device will be sterilized through gamma irradiation at a low dosage so that it does not change the topography of the device or the mechanical properties. And the shelf life is one year after manufacture if it's stored in negative 20 degrees Celsius. As you can see, our benefits clearly outweigh the cost. Prolonged protection against infection prevents the need for a second surgery. And increase in blood compatibility and endothelialization increases integration within the body. In the future, our layers can also be applied to other grafts. Um, our, the only costs that we have include fabrication and F FDA testing. Um, and overall, these benefits are perfect for our stakeholders, which includes surgeons, insurance companies, and patients. So lastly, we have our competition. First, we have decellularized grafts. These are made by Cryolife and Artigraft. These are not widely adopted, however, because they have not been found to have a clear advantage over synthetic grafts. Next, we have stent grafts. These are made up from, by Medtronic and Gore Technologies. These are more minimally invasive. However, it has been found that stent grafts have a three times higher re-intervention rate than others. And lastly, we have synthetic grafts made, made by Marquet. First, they have the, their Fusion BioLine product. This is layered PET and Gore-Tex. Uh, however, there's no infection resistance, unlike their Intergard Synergy graft that has silver and triclosan on the surface. This, however, only uh, protects against microbes for seven days because it's on the surface, unlike ours that ha has it integrated within the PCL. So as you can see, our design outperforms the competition.